wait, remember Martin Mystery? Because it would be a mystery if you didn't. And now that you've survived that Jordan cringe joke, let's continue to the video. It was a French, Italian, Canadian anime inspired television show based on the popular 1982 comic series by Alfredo Castelli. It follows the crime solving adventures of Martin Mystery, his stepsister Diana Lombard, and their Neanderthal friend Java the Caveman. They must all balance their normal lives at Torrington Academy with the paranormal world that never sleeps and often seeps into their lives at school. The series first premiered on Canada's YTV on October 1st, 2003, and made its United States debut in 2004 on Foxbox, an old Saturday morning Fox Network block that at one point had all of these cartoons fighting each other, R.I.P. Kirby. <laughs> It later ran for three months on Nickelodeon in 2005, with reruns after being shown for the following three years on Nicktoons. The series is produced by Marathon Media, now known as Zodiac Kid Studios, which also produced another well-known show with an investigative crime-fighting trio that I covered in our Wait Remember series not too long ago, It Totally Spies. While many fans complained that Martin Mystery didn't get nearly as much attention as its sister show, Totally Spies, it did get a 66 episode run with three full seasons. In comparison to the now still ongoing Totally Spies, Martin Mystery is not fully a flop or a bop, so let's call it a blop. But our goal here today is not to just compare the show, which let's face it, we will for some points or a lot of points, but rather take a look at it on its own, what it was about, what happened to it, and all that other fun stuff. <laughs> Now a word from our sponsor. Thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. Surfshark VPN is a virtual private network that helps you secure your digital life in turn helping your real life by putting your worries at ease. Surfshark offers one of the best full coverage VPN packages out there with an unlimited number of devices that can all run under one subscription, all at the same time. Seriously, as many devices as you want. The Surfshark app itself is available on all platforms, PC, Mac, and of course the Linux users out there, you're covered as well. Even smart TVs and video game companies consoles, all along with 24-7 live customer support and a full 30-day money-back guarantee to make sure you know it's completely risk-free by giving them a shot, as well as one of the best security measures with their strictly no-logs policy which encrypts your data, meaning that they do not keep any of it, nor does anyone know what you're doing online. Want to watch something that isn't streaming in your country? And no worries, just connect to any of the servers Surfshark has around the world and boom, you can access streaming libraries of even more content that otherwise would not be available in your country. It's fast and it's easy to use, filled with features that go beyond just the basics with a regular VPN. If you want to protect yourself online while browsing, as well as help support the channel, you can get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash jordanfringe, and enter promo code jordanfringe for 83% off in an extra three months for free. So click the link down below in the description and get protected today. Oh, of course, I get it. Why didn't I think of that? Created by David Michael and Vincent Calvon de Marseille, the duo responsible for the hit girl power franchise Totally Spies. In the past, these two have shared their various personal inspirations for their work on Totally Spies, which definitely translates to Martin Mystery due to the similar storytelling and character writing. While Totally Spies was more in Clueless meets James Bond, Martin Mystery is if Scooby-Doo met James Bond, and trust me, it's totally different. David and Vincent have taken artistic liberties for the sake of a more modernized storytelling for TV. Much like Totally Spies' Whoop, Martin, Diana, and Java work for a secret covert organization called The Center that seeks to protect Earth and its people from the supernatural. At the head of the organization is MOM, an acronym for Mystery Organization Manager. I'm sure that the reason they chose to call the Mystery Organization Manager MOM is a reference to M's character in James Bond and how all of them call her ma'am, but their accents make it sound like they're calling her their mother. Mom, fittingly enough, plays some sort of paternal role in making sure that Martin and Diana stay on task and busy in their investigation. Similar to Totally Spies, Martin has his own gadgets that are accessible through a U-Watch. No, this one doesn't contain the DNA of a handful of aliens for him to transform into. Check out my multi-hour long Ben 10 video. Instead, the U-Watch has features like a database of all monsters, built-in bioscan, a U-Shield, a laser gun, an energy 
bungee blade and a turbo bungee grappling hook among a few other convenient weapons and tools, all stored in the convenience of a small watch. And it kind of looks like a digivice that has no relevance to anything, I just like that. In this monster of the week structure of storytelling, every episode offers something new and exciting. Not many of the episodes have a plot that carries over multiple episodes, so it's easy to jump around from episode to episode or take a break whenever you need to. It's usually monsters based on well-known culture legends or mythology, which usually allows the slightly older viewers to speculate and investigate along with the two of them. If you like The Secret Saturdays, there's a great chance that you'd enjoy this show as well, or at bare minimum, the concept of the show. But what makes this show its own is the characters themselves, especially after seeing the changes made to them from the comics. Now what do we do? Call in reinforcements. Martin Mystery is taking a break. The real mystery is, where is he going? The mystery is solved. We found Martin. He was playing with your neighbor's dog. Martin himself is one of those older viewers I just mentioned too, with a wealth of knowledge on modern adaptations like monster-centered movies, video games, and comics that often helps him in fighting against these creatures. Voiced by Sam Vincent, he sports a gravity-defying blonde hairstyle and some sort of variation of his iconic red and yellow flame button-up. Shall we play spot the difference here? Huh. All he needs is a goatee. His attitude in the series is worlds different from the comics. While Martin in the comics is heavily compared to Indiana Jones, the character in the comments actually first appeared in 1978, years before the first Indiana Jones movie was released. Both Indiana Jones and Martin Mystery were originally inspired by Alan Quartermain, a character created by a Victorian novelist, H. Ryder Haggard. All three characters are suave and brave older men who have committed their lives to exploration and heroism. In in the animated series, Martin could not be more the opposite. Because of his delusions and massive ego, he is convinced that every woman wants him and that every fish fears him. Usually, confidence can only make a person more attractive, but in this case, his personality is exaggerated to the fullest, basically harassing every woman around him. His stepsister Diana offers a nice opposing personality, though. She is often very exhausted with his high energy and obsession with girls that are clearly uninterested in him. Voiced by Kelly Sheridan, she also has a very exaggerated personality as an easy to anger crime solving partner who uses logic and reasoning to try to investigate due to her more uptight analytical and slightly obsessive disposition. In the comics, however, Diana plays Martin's fiance or wife, a social worker who does not join Martin on missions. I guess maybe the creators wanted a female partner for Martin that wasn't romantic so they made her his sister so no one would ship them? I don't know how much they know about the internet though because that's never seemed to stop anyone before especially if you make her a stepsister. What are you doing, you weirdos? But despite their more annoying personality traits, they are a very fun duo. Martin's geekier side is very endearing, and Diana actually does care for her brother no matter how much she criticizes him. And they do have some moments where they are vulnerable with each other after a more perilous mission. Although, it usually doesn't last long. And the more episodes I watched, the more they both grew on me. Joining them on missions is Java the Cave man, a real-life Neanderthal voiced by Dale Wilson, who serves as the muscle of the group. While in the comics he only communicates through grunts, the series gives him a little bit more to work with here. I waste time, say lot word when few word do trick. He works various jobs around Torrington Academy, the boarding school in Shearbrook, Quebec, where Diana and Martin live, allowing them to always be close together. There's also Billy the Martian, who flies around in a small saucer and works more with Mom, but is able to pop up when Martin, Diana, Diana and Java are on missions to offer assistance in testing samples or conveying messages back and forth. Billy and Martin are very close as Billy acts much like a younger protege to Martin, soaking up every delusional word he says. In the third season, he is given a human form called the BS-1000, and that's no BS. Allowing him to be able to attend Torrington Academy with the rest of the group. The tone of the show is much darker than the other media Marathon had produced in the past. Its gloomy palette alludes more toward older detective media like early Batman cartoons, Sherlock Holmes, Supernatural, and Scooby Doo. And considering Scooby Doo has had a crossover with all the aforementioned characters and shows, I think Martin Mystery could have had a fun time with a Scooby Gang team up and kind of have some fun with the validity of the paranormal. Animated 
by the Japanese studio Tatsunoku Productions, the show is very much an anime in spirit, with its exaggerated physical features and expressions. Atmospheric rich backgrounds further explore the series' visual noir reminiscent theme. The title cards remind me a lot of the Goosebumps books. Speaking of Goosebumps, Martin Mystery has received critiques on how scary some of the visuals were for its young target audience. This was really only voiced in reviews once the young viewers were old enough to reminisce about the repercussions of seeing some of the more nightmare-inducing things. They're all like, it made eight-year-old me crap my pants every week. 10 out of 10 stars would recommend. He's got a bad case of cabin fever. Martin Mystery will be back right away. That's just for you. For everyone else, we're taking our sweet time. If you concentrate really hard, Martin Mystery will come on. Well done. Totally Spies has been confirmed to return in 2023 with a seventh season, leaving a lot of fans wondering about a possible revival of Martin Mystery. While the entirety of the series aired while Totally Spies was in the bulk of its run, it's possible that the reason that Martin Mystery didn't continue past the third season is because of Totally Spies' success. But to challenge that, it's not like they were competitors at all. If anything, Martin Mystery could have ridden the wave of success that came with being associated with Totally Spies. Sure, it wouldn't be nearly as successful, but it would still be another related show that fans could turn to. And of course, the people at Marathon knew this, so naturally, they did have a crossover episode in the fifth season of Totally Spies titled Totally Mystery Much. Martin and the spies are both sent on the same mission at a ski resort in the Swiss Alps. They immediately attack each other, but after some discussion and a call from both Jerry and Mom, who are very friendly already, they are instructed to team up together to defeat a yeti snow creature that is attacking skiers and turning them into Yeti, much like himself. Martin obviously tries to hit on all the girls, except Sam, comparing her to his buzzkill sister. But despite a bad first impression, Martin and Alex really hit it off as they have a lot of the same interests and it's really nice. Even leaves Clover a little jealous despite her disgust at having a nerd attracted to her. Ew. It offered some fun acknowledgements to the differences between the two shows, like how much easier it is for Martin to be transported to the center, i.e. crawling through a cat cabinet as opposed to being sucked into a vacuum. The crossover episode was really fun, and I'm a little bummed it didn't happen more than once. But much like having the same people making two shows, the popular show in most cases completely overshadows the other, like with Man of Action having the Ben 10 series and putting out Generator Rex. Martin Mystery ended its run possibly due to one, lower ratings, but also, if we do look at the merchandise side of things, it clearly was never going to touch what Totally Spies was able to do on a global scale with toys, merch, and more. The last episode of the series aired on March of 2006, but that didn't stop Marathon from producing more Martin Mystery content. There was a Nintendo DS game that released in 2008, two years after the series finale, called Martin Mystery Monster Invasion. They've already shown that making more Martin mystery content after the series had ended is something that they are willing to do. So that paired well with the news of the Totally Spies reboot. It's very possible that we will see Martin again at some point in the future. Maybe it's just wishful thinking because I really hope we do, but who knows? Rewatching the series was a lot of fun and it really helped me get prepared for the spooky season. Do you think I should dress up as Martin for Halloween? People will probably think I'm just dressing up as Guy Fieri, but hey, that's a two-in-one costume. Call that cost-efficient. What were your thoughts on the series? Did you prefer it over Totally Spies? Did it give you nightmares? I need to know. Go ahead and drop your thoughts in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching and make sure to hit the like button and subscribe with notifications on for more content like this or I won't protect you from the monster under your bed or the one in your closet or the one in the hallway. Follow me on Twitter and I'll be back with another video soon, but until then, later.